This part starts, and we see, second floor boss the gloomy Clebius. They overpowered Clebius who was running from the second floor and forced him to their party. The maid Kelly stopped the party, but without her older twin sister, she was no match for Taylor and his party. Though Taylor's party didn't question why the twin maid was there alone, it was unexpectedly smooth, and they reached their destination, Ophelis Hall's fourth floor. From the start, it was only the first floor that was too tough of a challenge. Then we see that Alvira is very scared. And there is a man behind him, from whom very dangerous energy is coming out, due to which all the students are running away in fear. And we see Willine, who is in a lot of pain, and he is saying, I can't take it. Help me. Fourth floor boss hostage to the defense magic Willine. Placing the crystal ball that triggers the magic circle control system in the control room dead center for everyone to see was Alice and Lortel's scheme. The self-defense magic formulas carved all over the Ophelis Hall building were originally installed to protect students from outside invaders. But this scene right here is like a child holding a loaded gun. And Taylor's team gets attacked, but Taylor saves them from his attack. And we see, due to his attack, a bit of pressure has been generated due to which many students are also feeling it, and they all are saying, What? On earth is happening outside? And the other student says, At this rate, the building's gonna collapse. Where the hell are they maids? The Ophilic Hall students, who were maintaining their composure until now, could see that things were going too far, and used their powers to escape the building in their own ways. The whole situation was slowly turning into a catastrophe. And Taylor is saying to Alvira, Alvira, isn't there any more of the night butterfly flower reagent left? And Alvira says, night butterfly flower distorts the magic of Castor, but that rune's already carved. It's useless against it. For a quick rebound, this is the answer. Anglerweed reagent, a reagent made by mixing anglerweed seeds with emperor clam shells and melting them. It'll at least block all basic magic within this corridor. This is all assisting magic. Its quantity may be a lot, but you can handle its force. So leave this to me, and go knock Will Lane out. And both of them start moving towards Will Lane. And Will Lane is surprised to see this. And both of them are moving forward dodging all the attacks of Will Lane. And we see that Will Lane is crying and says, finally. And there is a huge explosion at that place, which is visible even from a distance. Then after this the scene shifts and we see that the horse cart is moving forward. And E.D. Roth Taylor and Janica are watching him silently, and Janica is saying to E.D. Roth Taylor, Ed, what? Are you doing here? If you keep pushing yourself, your wounds will open up again. And E.D. Roth Taylor is saying from behind the tree, it's not a big deal. Most of it isn't my blood. And Janica says, geez, just why are going this far? And E.D. Roth Taylor is looking at the horse cart and thinking, what kind of plan? You might think I'm being nonsensical despite that prestigious outer appearance, but considering the man inside, you can't help but call the horse carriage plain. Golden King Elt, ordinary, he'd be escorted by a grand fleet of over a dozen carriages, but his discreet approach hints at his secret motives. Elt is Lortel's adoptive father and is also the fake boss who later on gets backstabbed by Lortel and exits the stage. He's a figure that shouldn't be at the academy. Right now. Why is he here? It looks like the carriage has been there for quite a while now. Why is he just getting out? Is he waiting for the Ophelis Hall to be wrecked? That person? Third floor maid in charge of Dishishini. Shini is one of the orphans the chief made Alice raised. Alice was originally bought off by Lortel and Shinny was originally supposed to be the third-floor boss. But the fact that she's with Elt, who's Lortel's enemy, is definitely strange. There's no way Shinny would betray Alice. Lortel bought Alice off, but what if it was the other way around? Would Alice be on Elt's side? There's only possible future. L'Oreal's downfall. Lortel is the one who gets into a political fight with Fenia in Act 3 as well as the main character's biggest ally in the fight against the Rottweiler family in Act 4, I already had such a hard time taking Tote's place as the middle boss, but now I have to play Lortel's role as well? I say not to this insanity. Then E.D. Rothtaylor says to Janica, I have a favor to ask. It's urgent, 
so I can handle it on my own. And E.D. Rothtaler is thinking, how do I explain this to her? But Janica gets ready to accept what E.D. Rothtaler says without asking anything. And she says, what do I need to do? Greetings, Elp Ketchum, the Golden King and Honorable President of the Elp Merchantry. Unlike the outer appearance of Lady Lortel following your orders, as the adoptive daughter of the Elp Merchantry, in fact, she is plotting to betray you and take over the Elp Merchantry. Lady Lortel knows that you killed her biological parents, and is coaxing the business magnates and directors of the Elp Merchantry to oust you. Also, the negotiations to purchase the Sage's sealed grimoire were just an excuse to draw you out into the Sylvania Academy and a bait to strike you by surprise so you can't react in time to the crisis back at the Elp Merchantry's headquarters. Certain factors lead to finding out about this truth, and I'm now holding the confidential document that can prove Lortel's plot. But of course, in this world, nothing is free, since Lady Lortel offered me a huge amount of gold coins. Unless I'm offered more gold coins than that, I will side with Lady Lortel. I'm losing my sight, and due to an accident— I've almost lost all hearing. This will be my last year as the chief maid. I'm in a predicament, and the only human who knows of this truth. Depending on my choice, things will change dramatically. For the better or worse, the paper attached to this letter has the names of the institutions I've been secretly managing all this time. Crooks Orphanage in Sim Province, Cohelton Orphanage, Atens Crossel Orphanage, Alton Orphanage in Odell Province, Tamil Province Public Orphan Asylum. The amount of gold coins delivered to these institutions from now on will determine my actions hereafter. I trust you to make the correct judgment. Alice Olam Chief made at Ophelis Hall. And Alice is saying, Don't move, Mr. Elt will soon arrive here at Ophelius Hall. I didn't expect you to have that look in your eyes. I thought you were more level-headed. You said you were taking revenge against the Golden King, Elt, right? But I'm really sorry. In my eyes, you two aren't all that different though the same goes for me as well. But then there is an explosion at that place, due to which Alice gets shocked. And we see that Will Lane is being tied and taken away, and Alvira is saying, there's no way someone like Villain could have gotten close to defense magic. As I thought. The real culprit is, the chief made Alice. She's holding a hostage. Be careful, Taylor. And Alice gets very surprised to see those people. And Clebius is saying to Lortel, Lortel, are you okay? And Lortel is thinking, I'm fine, look over there. She's the woman who planned this whole mess. We need to take that woman down quickly. I should say that, and frame Alice for everything. And Alvira is saying to Lortel, Lortel, what's wrong with your face? And Lortel is thinking, just what kind of expression am I making for her to? And Lortel starts running away from here very fast, and she is thinking, Golden King Elt is coming. That man doesn't trust even his own henchmen, so he came all the way here himself. The plan to overthrow Elt is nearly complete. Elt will end up being responsible for large-scale tampering with the account books and the damages caused. Luckily, Elt isn't at the headquarters right now, so I just need to get in touch with the officials there. I just need to send the carrier pigeon hidden in the room and hide myself somewhere. As long as I, the center of the plan, am not captured, it'll all be okay. It'll be fine. Let's not get disappointed. There is no one in this world who understands me. As for betrayal. Well, I expected such a thing, and I've gone through it countless times, haven't I? So, getting my heart broken at this point doesn't suit me at all. So. I should do what I can. Right now, I must run. I must get to my room before Elt does. Everything is gonna be fine if I just send the carrier pigeon. At the same time, first floor, main hall. We see the Golden King and the Golden King is saying, Huh? Are you a student? Quickly evacuate. Then someone comes from the front and says, Due to the risk of collapse, we're not allowing anyone, inside this building for safety reasons, I can't let anyone through, until faculty and staff arrive. And the Golden King says, Did the Academy give you special instructions? So E.D. Rothtaler says, No. All in all, I'm acting on my own, since in these matters, Sylvania basically has a shop system. And E.D. Rothtaler is thinking, There are three people who are aware of the story's flow. 
Lordo, who wants to oust out, take revenge for her childhood, and empty the seat for the merchant's president. Then there's Elt, determined to thwart Lortel's plans, and succeed at purchasing the sage's sealed grimoire. And then, using the two, in the middle is Alice. The root cause of this twist in the story. I don't know why she betrayed her, but she's on the fifth floor with Lortel. Does that mean I need to go to the fifth floor to get rid of her? No. Even if I don't go there, as per the scenario, Taylor's party will run into her. I'm gonna leave her in their hands. I can trust them. Because I've already confirmed his abilities. Meaning I have to handle the matter here. Whatever else has been planned for the Ophelous Hall, as long as I just keep them out, events in the Ophelous Hall will continue as they should. Then E.D. Roth Taylor says to the Golden King, I can't believe it. Aren't you Elt Kecklin, the president of the Elt Merchantry? I'm sure there's a reason for someone of your stature to be here. But how about talking with them at the academy first, and making sure you're treated with the respect you deserve? And the Golden King says to E.D. Roth Taylor, I see. So you're on L'Oreal's side, huh? And this story ends here. If you want to see its next part, please subscribe to my channel so that I can upload its second part soon. So see you in another video. Till then bye.